So welcome guys uh, to session number two of our Bluebird sessions. This particular session that we're going to be going through today is uh, just about, just about, sorry, marking up droids. Uh, my name is Phil Cole, I'll be your presenter today. Uh, I am a technical consultant uh, with ATK Technologies. So what we'll do first, uh, I just want to explain a little bit about Cloud A2K first, uh, then jump into a bit of a brief introduction to Bluebeam, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty when it comes to the marking up of drawings. Now I've got two processes I would like to go through today. Uh, one's essentially uh, establishing some office standards that was based on traditional methods, using highlighters and pens, and then a secondary way of actually using some statuses as a part of our workflow instead. Uh, the ideal part about adding statuses uh, and also the markups there is we can actually do things from a reporting and replying uh, side to those markups. So I'm going to include how that process can be done and ultimately just generate a few reports uh, based on the markups that are on the drawings. Uh, now at any point in time guys, if you have any questions, feel free. There is a Q&A uh, tab at the top there you should be able to get access to um, and add your comments or feel free to ask any questions. I'll go through and review that at the end of the session. A little bit about Cloud A2K. So it is a company uh, that's quite innovative in regards to delivering the software, hardware solutions, consulting, training development and also managing services. The staff involved are very knowledgeable and actually are all from the industry themselves, whether that been in the architectural, engineering, construction, infrastructure, and also the manufacturing spaces. And we're obviously here to deliver our knowledge. Uh, I myself, uh, prior to taking the role of A2K Technologies, was a structural draftsman, uh, and in particular, Bluebeam Review have been using it since about 2014 in the industry as well. So I use it from an engineering background, so it's also a little bit about what we're, what we're going to go through today as well. Now, Bluebeam Review, uh, it's here to help us with our day in, day out tools. Uh, it's a very efficient um, tool and it's there to also help with our collaboration solutions as well. So in that being, so, uh, that being said, uh, the our concept of this is obviously to increase revenues, reduce costs and also minimise any risks using these tools. Now, Bluebeam obviously utilises the power of PDFs here. So one thing it does very, very well uh, is actually embedding metadata within its system. So adding that actual information to these PDFs, whether that's through markups, uh, extra data that could include, say, hyperlinks, uh, bookmarks, or even attaching different files together. It's very intuitive in how it actually approaches those. Uh, it's also great at hosting images. Uh, we can reduce and compress images to make file, uh, file sizes efficient. Um, we can do spatial, we can do also do markups uh, that are measurement based. It's uh, quite, a, quite a range of tools that are involved with this particular piece of product. Uh, and also quite new is we can actually take a lot of the authoring, 3D authoring files and uh, extract them out as 3D PDFs as well. So it has also that functionality. Uh, there's many different workflows we can utilize the tool for. Uh, a few in particular we see on the left hand side. Uh, quantity takeoffs being a big one in regards to the measurement tools uh, and coming up with some standards there. It is an option here to actually work a little bit more collaborative rather than just one person working on a PDF at a time. And that's actually through the studio uh, sessions environment. So if anyone's interested in that, there is a webinar coming up in a couple of weeks uh, that is to do with studio sessions as well. We also have drawing management tools such as sets, if anyone has actually come across that in the software and the document management side, which is the studio project. Uh, and then it also can help us with any field issues and RFR forms in our environment as well. Now, I'm just gonna jump into uh, review now. Um, just finish off this PowerPoint slide. So any questions, guys, feel free to ask at any time um, and I will review those at the end of the session. Just gonna minimize that. All right, so what I have in front of me to help with my marking out process, is I've established essentially two methodologies. My first methodology here is I'm taking what I've done, what I've done historically on essentially almost drawing board days, um, using uh, CAD, Revit, you name it, and where we would actually go through and manually print it out, highlight it off as you're actually completing the job. So down on the bottom right hand corner here, uh, I have established a little bit of a checking process uh, that is for the engineer, the draftsman and the processes back and forwards in communicating with each other. So what we would have traditionally done by hand, I'm sort of inventing back into the blue band scene. 
So as part of our checking process, uh, on the left hand side too, you can see I've already opened it here, is I already have established a set of tools. Okay, this particular tool chest uh, is utilizing some callouts as well as some highlighters and some cloud pluses. Uh, if you'd like to know a little bit more about how those can be built and added to your tool chest, um, have a look at series one uh, video. It actually went through the process of how to add those in there, guys. So feel free to have a look on the YouTube channel. Now, as a part of the process I have here, what we've done is essentially, essentially establish, you know, how should we be utilizing um, Bluebeam from a checking process to keep a standard methodology. So as a part of that, and the result is we've established that the engineer should always be marking up in red. So there is on the left hand side here a call out, just for instance, I'll drop that on there. But because it's red, is establishing that it should be something that should be completed. So for instance, I might say, let's review the layout of the verticals um, in respects. Uh, to the architectural. Okay, so we might have gone through and done an overlay, for instance, and identify that they're actually not in the right spot. So by highlighting it, that is red from the engineer means it's something that actually has to be done to the drawing. As a bit of a communication process back and forth and to keep it consistent as well, we also did introduce a comment based markup that is using a call out as well. Okay, and you can actually see already previously using the left hand side. So that can be a communication back and forth from the engineer to the drafting and also from the drafting back to the engineer as well. So rather than having to jump up essentially out of your seat, that is another alternative. Uh, and it's quite visual as well, I will just add. Now, as a part of the process for the draftsman itself, we've then established, okay, as a part of receiving a drawing, they're to use yellow and orange highlighters, okay, to do their checking, uh, sorry, to do their markup and also do their back checking. So if they were to go through and essentially say they are going to review these and complete it, there is a markup tool we've established for using a highlighter. Now, neat trick, guys, if you're finding it tries to highlight all the text, you hold the control key down, it actually allows you to freehand use the highlighter. Okay, so as part of the process, we're saying the draft highlights in yellow first. And then once he's printed off the drawing and checked it, or print off the new PDF and checked it, he can then come back, he or she, sorry, can come back and put a little orange dot. So it's almost signify that it actually has been completed. Now you can see that uh, in the, my previous markups here for this particular drawing, where the actual engineer has gone through, crossed off, given us a little bit of a markup to say, how there's now not 130 anymore, it's actually 150 thick. As a part of that process, the draftsman has come in, marked it off in a yellow highlighter first to a so that it has been changed and then also put a little orange dot beside it to say it has been backdraft as well. The blue comments, as I said, that's a communication process in between. Uh, now, as the draftsman has then handed the drawing back to the engineer, the engineer then has a blue highlighter. Now, the idea of the blue highlighter is when it mixes with the yellow, which is quite neat, it will go green. Okay, so today, King, what we would have done traditionally uh, printing our drawings, we've established back in the blue beam environment. And just simply by coming up with a tool chest, okay? Now, the reason why they're sort of named in a particular way, guys, and I'll show you how it's actually done as well, it's all through the properties on the right-hand side. Okay, so these particular respective markups um, will contain a certain subject. That gives us a lot of flexibility when it comes to filtering it out and just searching for relative markups or checking the actual procedure has indeed been completed. Okay, so I'll, I'll show that a little bit further when we get into the creation of some of these markups. Now, just to wrap off that procedure, there is a final review or approval start process that we have thrown in here that is purple. So that ultimately is the person who's going through and approving that drawing. And if they're happy with that, you know, single strike through it, or it could be a highlighter. Okay, so it's just to show you guys, you know, we don't have to this is just one methodology, sorry, we don't know, we don't have to, it's just one methodology and how we can actually utilize Bluebeam uh, to take our current checking procedure and make it digital. All right, now as a result of this, there is a, another alternative way of actually using our markups, okay? Now I've used the same markups I have on the left-hand side, so these clouds, and established a few other markups associated to this particular drawing here. 
They do utilize the same subjects. Okay, there is colors associated to those as well. So if you do flick between colors, you can see it update. Okay. If you'd like to know how to save a tool tool chest, as I said, have a look at uh, session number one, or a quick little reminder is add tool chest on the right hand side here. Okay, and that's simply by right clicking. So as you can see, the engineer and the draftsman have gone through and actually communicated different markups in respect to this drawing. The second method I wanna show you how we can start communicating back and forwards internally is actually using statuses, the comments, and then also producing reports out of this. Okay, so at the very, very bottom here, if anyone's jumped into the markup list, it will give us a basically a heads up of exactly that every single markup that has been dropped onto this particular page or pages, depending if it's a multi-page video. So we can see there's a markup tag to the drawing here, another one there, there, and another one there. Okay, ultimately they should be red, sorry. So as a part of the addition to the actual uh, sorry, adding the markup to the drawing, we can assign a status, okay, to say whether it's in review or it has been completed. Uh, and one of those ones in particular is we've actually gone through and created a process that is mimicking essentially what would have been the highlighter process, okay? So your initial markup is number one, that's fine. Let's say the draftsman has received that drawing and is going through and doing their back check. By hitting the back check, you'll just see it has changed the color, okay? So visually it changes, and at the same time, it also adds in here, whoops, if I just be very slow with that, it actually adds in there who back checked it by, uh, sorry, what, what, what the actual um, status was, by whom, and at what time, okay? After, say for instance, that back check actually has been complete and the engineer then receives the drawing, they too can come back in and set a status, and that status may be checked. It won't delete any previous statuses, which is fantastic, so it keeps a history of it, but as you can see, it just continually builds on top of it. Okay, so as an alternative to using those highlighters, this is your second methodology by using the metadata in behind the markup themselves. Okay, utilizes your name, puts a time date stamp at the very end. Now to create your own sort of statuses, I'll just show you where it lies. This little button right here, okay? I can go through and either add in another one or manage that status. Let's just say we wanna come up with number one for number five. Let's just call it approved. Just for today's instance, give it a color. We might make that our purple. Okay, there was a peer review, I'll make another one in there. Go okay. I find that same markup again. I can then add the status for approved, it's purple. Okay, so it's very easy to create and add statuses uh, to this particular list. Uh, and if you do set it up prior to, uh, as a part of your profile, it means every time you open a PDF, it's already there, okay? Awesome. Now, another aspect of actually utilizing the metadata down the very bottom is the communication back and forwards. So rather than having to put another markup on the drawing to go, okay, I'm not sure what actually this means, you can simply reply to different markups. So by right-clicking and applying, it will bring up a comment field. We might go uh, possibly to set out uh, is required in order to complete the actual job. It is then tacked on to that markup, held on to that markup too. So as long as that markup stays on the drawing and isn't deleted, you will see this. Okay, so it's another form of communication back and forth, essentially a bit more digitally. Now what we can also do down at the very, very bottom here is start adding in some custom columns. So if anyone's experienced custom columns in the past, they're quite uh, robust and also you can pretty much do quite a variety of different tasks within the custom columns. So we currently have one here for responsibility. Let's just show you where they sit. If we go into the column, manage columns, a custom column can be created and added to your profile. I'll just edit the one that currently was added. Okay, you have a choice between creating a check mark, choice, date, formula, number, and text-based custom columns. We're currently seeing a choice-based one, which means that you can have a list of individuals, or as we're seeing here, different disciplines as choices. And if you really, really want to get nitty gritty, you can have certain markups that have only certain choices as well by making sure that the subject field is filled out. So if you'd like any further information, 
feel free to reach out to them from A2K and we can sort of uh, sit down and go through those. So by having a choice uh, that is a part of my profile means that I can start looking at some of these markups, say for instance, one of these two here, and attach it to an individual or a discipline. Okay, so that one might be in regards to the engineer. That was probably more architect, but we get the idea. This one here, I might say, is also to do with the engineer. Now, by coming up and, sorry, by customising essentially and adding in these choice-based columns or even having subjects in there gives us flexibility with filtering. Okay, so by having the filtering flexibility, it means that I can go through and search for anyone in particular in my list and everything else sort of grays out. Okay, it makes finding your markup that little bit easier as well. Uh, so visually it's great because we have different colors, uh, but if we have quite a lot of markups and it might be split between a few individuals in the same business, this is one way around that rather than trying to go, hey, I'll do the top left hand corner and you do the rest. Okay, so the filtering capabilities, it gives us, I click that back on, same deal if we wanted to filter out, say for instance, the subject. All right, so I'll find everything that is just to do with add to drawings. Okay, so the communication process back and forward becomes a bit easier. Now, as a part of this filtering process, uh, it also helps us when we're actually exporting out different summaries. So you've got three to choose from. Generally, I wouldn't really print a summary because we're already in Bluebeam. Uh, we've got CSV, XML, and PDF. Now, what I will do is just firstly show you what happens when you're not using filters. Let's say CSV, for instance. I'm going to save this to that follow location. It currently has a name. It's going to throw the date at the very end of this. Uh, you can do multiple um, reports on different pages as well, which is fantastic. And it gives us an idea of what sort of information it's going to capture. Ultimately, that can be saved as a configuration shared between the business as well. By going OK, we'll export out every single one of my different markups, uh, what its subject was. Uh, and then you could possibly use the power of uh, filtering within Excel to start going through and seeing what sort of subjects there are. Okay, and then you get a little bit more context to the actual data behind the PDF. Uh, so that's one sort of report we can generate. Well, the one I do prefer is actually attaching it to the PDF itself. So at the moment, this particular PDF is just a single page document. Uh, if I was to go through and filter off and let's just say we're only looking for things that are to add to the drawing, which is currently what we have. Okay, I can produce a PDF summary. The PDF summary I can append to my current PDF and uh, make it hyperlinked as well. Uh, the title of the PDF is that, as in what it would have been previously. You can even templatize how your PDF uh, actually looks as a part of a, uh, almost like an RFI. RFI, sorry. Uh, save the configuration again, load it into other computers, and then ultimately hit OK. It will produce a little report behind the PDF. You can see that's actually page number two there. I have a look at my little page number. And it's shown me the markups. The name of the markup in particular, you know, add to drawing is what these ones are actually uh, about. Any comments associated to them. So you can actually see there's some text issues. Um, uh, can't see to read, even read the text. And where I have gone through and done some approvals on one of them, and uh, also my reply as well. Okay, so it generates a bit of a report. Now, a really neat feature is if you click on the little image there, there's a direct hyperlink back to where it sits on the PDF. Okay, so that there is sort of essentially just a very brief uh, rundown, guys, of utilizing uh, statuses to assign different colors replying to those markups, and then ultimately producing some reports out of that as well. That ultimately can be sent off. Does anyone have any questions of what we've just shown over the past sort of 20, 20 odd minutes? I did see there was a few questions before. <laughs> Anton. Uh, I can get some answers for you in regards to whether YouTube is. Um, I, probably what I would suggest, Dave, is I'll just jot down your, your name there. I'll, I'll get one of the guys to find your email and send through where the YouTube channel is. So um, it should be pretty easy to find on YouTube as well. It could be actually called Bluebeam Burst as well. 
Excellent, guys. Uh, does anyone have any other further questions? Okay, so there's a few hands being raised. Uh, if you're if you're able to, guys, do you mind putting that in the Q and A section? I'm just worried if I unmute everyone, I might get bombarded with uh, a lot of people trying to talk at once. <laughs> okay. Okay, so your first question, Katrina, in regards to, can I see a list or a notice of comments that haven't been actioned? Uh, I would actually utilize the status here. So by utilizing the status, I might say anything that actually has been approved is all I see. So what you could do is if there was a comment, uh, let's just go back here, that wasn't answered, just get rid of filters and bring everything back up, everything back. All right, I might just grab another markup. If I set a status to that one there, Katrina, and it's only back checked, it gives me that filtering capability to just find things at certain stages. Hopefully that sort of answers your, your question there. Uh, there is no layers in this PDF, unfortunately, Kane. <laughs> uh, there isn't. Thanks, so. Uh, good question. Good question, Ashley. Uh, in regards to offsetting, uh, the closest thing you can get to it from a CAD based perspective, guys, would be actually using, oh no, I've put this in the way now. Uh, under the tools, there is some sketching based tools to scale. So, providing that you have calibrated your drawing, you can get some shapes uh, pretty close. Um, not the best solution, though. Obviously, you really want to be using CAD to do a lot of the, the line based solution there. Okay. Uh, hyperlinks, yes they do. They do indeed work in other PDF softwares. Actually, they also work in, if you open up in Windows Explorer as well, because essentially all of this is just a hyperlink. Uh, pointer, oh yeah, sorry Barry, I'll get, uh, I'll guess, we'll get the list of these questions and Barry and uh, Dave guys, we'll get a, a, um, a link for you guys to show you where the first episodes are. Just to double check, Katrina. Uh, yeah, we might actually, Katrina, we might take that offline and uh, feel free to reach out, send us an email and uh, I'll just understand the workflow a little bit more. Um, and then we can sort of see if that answers the question. Fantastic, guys. Uh, if that is for all the questions, um, thank you for attending. That was great. Uh, these are designed to be nice and short and sharp. Um, Awesome. Hopefully I see you guys in a couple of weeks for the next um, session number three. Until then, take it easy. Talk soon.